fighters to to train hard especially when you're in fight camp because ultimately at the end of the day you're training to fight against someone that's trying to hurt you um, and if you don't train you're going to get hurt and as the levels get higher you've got to try and stay ahead of the game as much as possible that them fine little things them fine little details make all the difference and um yeah if if your opponent has trained harder than you and is on the same level as you it's going to be a bad day for you so um that's that's why i think everyone has to train as hard as possible and and take it as serious as possible take your time T. <coughs> ah, ah, nine Ten, nice, good, good. Yeah. Two, think speed, fast and poppy. Loads a little bit like a quarter of a second too slow with him. Up, up, up. Yeah. There you go, perfect. Yeah. Six, yeah. eight, nice, good. Training with Lewis is it's always hard. Like we we do hard sessions even out of camp, like. The, the sessions are pretty hard, but again, when when the fight camp comes, we, we we pick it up a lot more. And um, there is also days where we have just purely technical days, and Lewis is real real technical minded as well. So we we do always work on new stuff or stuff that I'm good at, and we just brush up on that. It's fun, but it's really hard at times as well, and especially when we're getting close to fights, it's um, mentally tiring and and physically, but it's what makes you. Step forward to push, and plan it, always plan. Again. Nice, left knee. Good. Nice, good. Switch your elbow. Knee. Lock up. Good, strong. Nice, good. Knee. Good. Piercing left knee. Nice, yeah. So round knee to score. As soon as that lands, it's a little snap. Yeah. yeah. Good. Remember, again, it's like the elbows, right? They can't see it, it hurts way more. To prioritise the speed and the poppiness. Score! Yeah, that's all you need. Me. Push away. Nice, good. Control the range. Move, nice. Good, teep. Good, now. Teep. Kick it cold. Nice, teep. Lovely balance, Dan. Teep and then kick straight away as soon as you feel it. Measure. Measure. Good, again. You know how you switch back for that kick? Yeah. Step in the elbow instead now. So you teep, step, bump, yes. So teep left kick. As soon as they start reacting to that, teep, step in. Nice, teep, go back forward. Nice. Two, go. Right hand, now, hook kick, fake the low kick. Uh -huh. ah, fake the load more, show me that arm. Uh -huh. ah, nice, been hooking kick instead. Fake the load. Uh -huh. ah. Oy, nice, lovely, good. Breathe. <coughs> nice, switch and teep. <coughs> nice, mate, breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Ah. Good, right hand right over. 
That's lovely. Hey, nice. Good. One step forward once. Ah, ah, so you push him, step back. Ah, oh, yeah. When you're here, right? Bom, bom. Keep every, everything tight, yeah. Not, it's not to lean back from a hook. It's more just if you are walking back, long guard blind him, then go over the top, yeah. The odds are, like, if he's gonna try and push you, right, he's gonna try and push you with straights. Come over the top, yeah, do you know what I mean? Hook. Uh, oh, lovely. Loose shoulders, loose shoulders, measure, touch. Loose shoulders. Nice, good. Tap, tap, loose shoulders. Nice, have the forward elbow at the end, touch. Up. Explode, explode, explode. Now. go up like so the training intensity goes up a lot higher so when you're out of fight camp you can work on a lot more technical stuff you can work on a little bit more game plan kind of stuff you can work on different styles you can try new things out and I think that's where you develop your skill set as a fighter whereas the fight camp it's about getting fight fit and um, that's where it gets a little bit more intense yeah no TV's gonna save Dan McGowan from these kicks Ten. Right knee. Good, that's when I'm close. I'm a bit further. Step, grab the knee. Nice. Now go for that elbow. Use the footwork. Step. Yes. Up. Good. Teep. Nice. Switch left kick. Fast. Switch to teep. Switch blind and elbow. Nice. Up. Nice. Don't smother your work. Keep it long. Teep. Good. Now. Left kick forward to the elbow. Oh, slippery boy. Ah, nice, deep. Good. Jab. Ah, good. Oh, mate, I know it's coming. I can't even see it. Lovely. Nothing until you feel that. Oh, nice. See what I mean? Up. Up. Two. Go. One. Two. Go. Ah, one. Ah, don't stop. Two. Ah, one. Ah, two. Ah, one. Ah, two. Ah, one. Ah, two. Ah, one. Ah, lovely. Good. Done. What's that? 18 rounds. No, 17 rounds. Call it a day. Oh, good. Outside of camp, it's about just tick, you know, keep yourself ticking over, keeping the reaction sharp. And then in fight camp, it's just adding little subtle movements that I think I would like that could possibly be done in the fight. Like obviously nothing to guarantee, but it's just subtle little differences, subtle little movements. Just like add them in into the pad work. You don't add them too much where it disturbs the complete flow of the training. But it's just getting the brain thinking really. Again, like the little like little switches, little movements, little fakes. Like again, like nothing should ever prioritize your instinct. But them early rounds. Keep him long, bother him, bother him with it. Chip away, chip away. Little fakes, chip away. Left kick, teep. Then you can start upping it a bit more. Coming closer to the elbows, the clinch, the knees, that sort of thing. Don't engage, don't, don't engage in a war early while he's at his strongest. Just be smart of it. But that's it. But again, nothing will take over instantly. If Dan sees a fucking elbow to be taken, like do it, fine. You know, we've been saying like slow things down. I feel like it's starting to calm down. Because you're so explosive, like. You don't need to try so hard of it. Slow it down, time your shots, and make like, you, yeah, yeah. you, you chip away either way. You'll chip them away with that. Don't need to be like, go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, that's like things like the Mario, like you, some of this stuff, you're so explosive with Poppy, just don't have to do as much. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Same more things. Calculated way more calculated, exactly. Yeah. And it's good. Nice. Instinct's always number one priority, but then the little things will come in. Like, like the Mario one, where you're popping that jab, you use that jab to then switch down, was it like, it was great. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that stuff was great. It's so hard to prepare for something like that. Do you know what I mean? It's so hard. And that was meant to be your third fight back, theoretically. Yeah. That was meant to be your third fight back, do you know what I mean? Everything we would work on, it was so sharp and great. It's just, it's controlling the fight. As much as, yes, you want to do damage, it's a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Score, calculated reserve. You've got to think longevity-wise, not just... But your jab is like your best punch now. Yeah. And because you like to elbow, it sets up everything. It yeah. sets up everything. There's nothing the jab can't set up. So just using that jab, keeping it poppy, keeping it bothered with it and using it to set up. It's just, again, it's just, the, the more you fight though, the more that flow and that, 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 that relaxation in your shots will come. Like, do you know what I mean? That's what it is. That's why with this sort of camp, I'm just trying to prioritise it. When you do explode, breathe, relax, yeah, yeah. don't go crazy. I, I train all year round and hard in fight camp now anyway, because I'm at the stage of my career where I've built quite a decent name for myself and my opponents that I'm fighting now are looking to take me out all the time. So um, I've got to try and stay ahead of that all the time as well. And I've got to try and stay ahead of the game. And um, that's the reason why it's important for me to stay stay fit and stay focused on on the job because um, yeah, I've got, I've got a name and I've got a target sometimes on my back and these young and hungry fighters, up and coming fighters, they're they're looking to take me out like I was when I was young. And I think it's really important to analyze your technique and performances, especially after fights. I really like to watch my fights a few times back just to see what went right, what went wrong, and really get that into my mind of, of either one, just so I can keep practicing on the good stuff and also brush up on the on the stuff that I've, I've done wrong. So this is the uh, Mario Alvarez fight. This bit is mad, yeah, so it's my walkout and it's like three years, I had three years out and um, I didn't even think, I didn't even know if I'd fight ever again because like the injury and yeah, so this this bit was pretty emotional actually. Like, I, I actually had to like hold back my like, I don't know, not tears, but like, I felt very emotional in that moment. Like, it was like I've finally come back. Um, and also a, a good thing is in this venue, Croydon, uh, Fairfield Halls, I'd watched Liam Harrison against Senchai, and he done he done the exact walk. And I remember watching it when I was like 11 or 12. And I was like, I always want to fight in that venue and I always want to do an entrance like that. Like going down the stairs, everyone cheering me. So like, yeah, like maybe, what's this, about 14 years? 14 years later, I was like, one of the main events, like walking down the stage after one of the main events. So I was like, after three years out, so like kind of just shows like how far I came as well. Yeah, so like, yeah, I was, yeah, I was in the zone and it was weird because I kind of forgot what, how it felt. I ha hadn't done this for a long time, so yeah, it was, it's, it was a mad feeling. Like the fight started, I mean, I felt, I felt really confident still, I felt strong. But I did, I did look over and I was thinking, fucking hell, Mario's got a lot bigger. Since the um, since the weigh-in, he looked he looked a little bit bigger than what I remember him the day before at the weigh-in. Like he was very tall for the weight, he was big for the weight. Like to be honest, but as the round went on, I felt really good. Like especially in like I said, in the first round and two round, or like first two rounds, I felt really sharp. Like you see, like I was smashing him with some good shots. He he was throwing some nice shots, so it was real good. It was an entertainment fight, fast pace. Use that guard control as well to move on. Oh, yes! Over the top, over the top! Oh! Oh! Lovely, lovely. 
Yeah, yeah I, felt, I felt good. I felt strong. Right, Dan, I felt a lot more. Mate, I felt rest. like I had him in the clinch a little bit. Like he was strong, but I felt like my experience and technique was was like showing. That that's one thing I kind of. There's no regrets. I don't. I don't regret anything. But because I, it is what it is now. But I started off throwing some real heavy low kicks, and that was the plan the whole time. Hold your hands, grab it, shove it in. Oh, nice. You two away. You two away. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. Keep that weight up and down, turn him. Nice. Watching this back and like, I was hitting him hard with him and I think if I carried on throughout the rounds, I think, I think it would have been causing him a lot of pain. I think, I think what, um, what the commentator just said there, like they fenced him, he, he said like Mario was conserving his energy very well and I think, again, like, I think because I had the time out, I think that's where like, my my kind of eagerness took over a little bit in round one where instead of being a bit more calculated, I was throwing everything into every shot. And obviously being out so long, like I should have probably conserved my energy a little bit more like Mario done, like kind of picked his shots wisely. I probably should have chilled out a little bit in round one. But it's exciting to watch, you know, like I want people to be excited when they watch me fight as well. I was throwing, el like we're both throwing elbows straight away. You know, like that's, that's not really that common in Muay Thai. Like that you usually see the elbows come in later on in the fight, we're there just, we're already trading big shots. And that's why people pay to watch. Breathe. There you go. All right, sit down, Dan. When I've like, had real success with my elbows, it's when someone's trying to either elbow or punch me, and then I can evade them and I throw my elbow. So they'll miss a shot and they're kind of like side on, so you're getting them right at the side of the head. Like, I've done that to quite a lot of people actually, and I think that's, I've just literally seen it there. Like I, I caught him with a few there as he missed. Yeah, like I land the elbows more when someone's attacking, like and I counter with my elbows. That's where I usually get a lot of success. I'm throwing elbows from the clinch. He's missed, and I just caught him right on the side there. That's when I get like a lot of joy. He was just constantly pressuring me. I think he'd done his homework as well. Like for him, it'd probably be if I was fighting, if I was him, knowing I had three years out, I'd be pressuring them because obviously they haven't felt that kind of five-round kind of pace in a long time. And then also, like I'm a very technical fighter as, as well, so like trying to give me no space, like he gave me no space a lot of the time. So like a mixture of both of them was it was hard to deal with him that night. But I feel like if I fought him again, I think like. I think I'd beat him. It's just, just one of them, one of them nights. Like it's, you know, from both of us, like, I'm um, giving myself a bit of props, so, but like even him, like it, it's high level. Like you know, like it, you just the way we fight, it just looks. It we're just both fighting at a very high level, and like he was doing some really, really good things to stop me at, with my attacks and with my like with my game plan. And, and then sometimes I was stopping him from doing some of the stuff he wanted to do. So like, it was real. Like at, at this point in round two, I feel like I was a little bit of a, he a little bit ahead um, going into round three. But he was he was pushing on really strong as well. So it was well, it was this, we'd fight ten times. Yeah, it'd probably be fight of the year ten times. You know, it would be one of them. Like he caught me with a knee and it stopped the fight early. But if that went five rounds, that was going to be crazy fight. Like you know, that would have just carried on being crazy. Combinations go as well, you understand? Over, over. Let's go. I remember like going into round three, I remember feeling a bit tired though, to be honest. And I've never felt really like that. Here, this, this is the things that I picked up on though. Like look, look at my back on the ropes, that's when he's throwing his knees. I can't get out of the way of the knee when, when my back's on the rope like that. So there again, like he's just caught me with another one. I, I didn't actually realise until until I watched this back, I didn't realise how many times he caught me with knees before he actually got me. And this is the jab. I missed the jab because I was lazy. My footwork was all over. I back up. That, yeah. He just caught me right, like, he caught me, like, I, I feel like I was covered up everywhere. But he went through the one littlest gap because he has such a pointy knee. 
And then after that, like, I mean, I was so hurt here. Like, I kind of wanted to just give up, to be honest. Like here, like I thought, how am I going to keep this guy off me? And then I just went elbow wall crazy with him. In my head, I thought, I've been put down. I need to knock him out now in the fight to win the fight. No matter if I got dropped again, I thought, I have one chance of landing some elbows with him. If I didn't finish him, I'm never going to win the fight. Move off, Dan, move off! Keep it forward! Yes! Oh, up with the hand! Go down! Don't get greedy! Move off! Tried again to try and uh, elbow him. I tried so hard to elbow him. I caught him so many times as well. Coming up now. Well done. There was a few mistakes that I made that really cost me um, and it's just minor minor things and it's it's tiny things but again as, as the levels get higher them little things make such a big difference so um, it's, it's always important to try and correct them mistakes. Um, I think one thing for me in my career as well is I got, I got to a stage where I started winning so much I, I thought I was invincible and I couldn't get beat and, and I'd learn everything but that is not the case like I've, now I've got the mindset I learn every day every day I'm in the gym I'm always willing to learn more I always know there's more to add to my game there's always more to improve on so um, I think that's the most important thing as well is analysing what, what went right and what went wrong and making sure you get better at both.